So Google's wrapped up a nice little early Christmas gift with Android 16 Developer Preview 2. It's here, it's available, you can flash it right now. But what's new? Let's get into it. If you want more Android 16 and Android update coverage, well, you are in the right place. You know by now what we do, we dive deeper than anyone else into all facets of Android. So stick around by hitting the subscribe button to join our growing community. So let's go over a few things that are completely new with the Android 16 developer preview 2 before we get into some things that have been added from an older update. Although this is actually technically rolling out to all pixels that do support it soon, enhanced now playing does actually come for most devices with the Android 16 DP2 update. So effectively, this is a replacement for the show search button that you might have available on your lock screen if you've enabled this. It's You may have used this before, it's a really nice touch added with older versions of Android. It basically works in the same way here, but uses better Google search and Google services to enhance the experience by giving you album artwork for those tracks that you've found or your phone has found and is able to discover and work out what they are. I've tested it out for a little while since installing this on my device and credit where it's due, it's pulling up practically all album covers and single artwork, even for some random tracks I expected it to struggle with. That's not all though, as there are some extra changes, as finally we're able to set a default music player within the Now Player settings that lets you work by tapping the track and then opening your music streaming app of choice. You can disable this entirely if you wish, but it's great as it does take the legwork out of finding and getting into your new favorite tracks or favorite albums. This is actually rolling out to the Pixel 6 and newer right now, separate to this update, but it is bundled in here with Android 16 developer preview 2 for what it's worth. So if you happen to get this or you happen to have updated to developer preview, you should get this straight away without having to do anything extra. In the developer options within Android 16 developer preview 2, there is a brand new toggle for you to select and to play around with. The show touchpad input option is new within this input section. It's listed as being a screen overlay display touchpad input data and recognized gestures. Now I don't have a touchpad to test this out with, but this probably helps in developing applications where touchpads are supported, such as laptops, for instance, or happen to work with things like Chrome OS. I think that might be what this is being used for. Heck, it could even be related to the Pixel tablet desktop mode, but we haven't been able to fully test this at this stage, but it is a brand new toggle here in developer preview too. The note taking shortcut now actually works and lets you add it to the lock screen. So long as you have that force enable notes role in the developer options enabled. Sadly though, if you do long press this and add this to your lock screen period, it just shows a warning screen with a typically googly designed inkwell and quill saying coming soon. And there will be a shortcut with an M3 button to open Google Keep. I think maybe this is one that we'll finally get to see implemented in Android 16 because this has been available in developer options for quite a while but it just hasn't worked at least up until this point. One important inclusion for security though, due to the fact that the Pixel 9 series has an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, is an ability to actually enable a screen off fingerprint unlock with Android 16 Developer Preview 2. This is brand new. It basically means that you don't need to turn the screen on or activate it to unlock your device if you have a fingerprint lock enabled. It will work in all kinds of scenarios and in our testing it seems to work really nicely and it's a really nice addition as this is something that Samsung phones have had for a long time already. So that's the new things. That doesn't sound like much but there are some things that have joined this update from Android 15 QPR to Beta 2 which actually dropped just yesterday and some of the additional features as I noted from that update are here too. When you open the Bluetooth menu from Quick Settings there is a nice bit of UI refinement here as you'll actually get PNGs for the devices you're connecting to or have connected to in the past that have a Google or at least are in Google's database. This looks way cleaner and replaces the generic headphone or headset icon that is just basically used for every type of Bluetooth device from this mini pop-up menu in Android 15 and older. It's just a nice touch to at least get you some kind of customization, I guess, in this section. It also goes further though as you are or at least when you're connected to say a pair of Bluetooth ear earbuds like the Pixel Buds Pro or the OnePlus Buds Pro 3 like I am here. The settings menu for these earbuds now has a battery ring around each device. So things like the case and the earbuds themselves will be encircled by this to indicate the charge level, which is supplementary to the text indicators within this section. This should adhere to dynamic color theming principles, but I do find that the colors here are a little bit deeper than in the wallpaper and style, or at least the wallpaper and style theming settings. On that front, the themed icon toggle in the wallpaper and style section also ditches that beta tag here as well. 
it still has issues with certain applications so it isn't technically out of beta or at least it isn't being forced by the system let's hope this changes though in the next preview or the next beta of android 16 or maybe even android 15 qpr2 beta 3 or beta 4 whatever they call that the terminal application now actually loads and it opens well it worked it crashed before so it works at least to a greater extent than it did in the previous update so basically when you enable the linux development environment toggle in the developer options section you can now fully open that terminal app that will appear after you've toggled this in the app drawer there ain't much you can actually do at the minute as it's still technically a work in progress and some prerequisites are missing for this particular application that said it will launch now and it will download the necessary files to at least go through that first setup or that first run the last qpr feature that has made the jump over here to android 16 developer preview 2 is the boot with 16 kilobyte page size option in developer options and with this google is making android faster or at least attempting to make android faster by increasing the size of memory chunks than it actually works with this reduces potentially the amount of bookkeeping that the system needs to do leading to quicker thing, things like app launches better gaming performance and improved battery life while this requires changes from app developers it definitely promises a significant performance boost for future android devices with large amounts of on device ram as for some of the intangible benefits with this update well the developer notes for Android 16 Developer Preview 2 notes, or at least suggest to note that haptics are an area of focus for this release. I can't say anything has changed just yet, or at least I've, that I've noticed, but hopefully I, this does mean we're going to get richer haptics with apps and maybe across the system with future updates as this is something I think Android has really done well in the last few years, increasing the haptics in a lot of system areas. The last thing to be aware of here is the Deve December 2024 security patch. I mean, it wouldn't be a new update without the latest patch anyway. This is a developer preview, so I would say even though it has that security patch installed, don't go installing or flashing this on your main device. But at least if you are full hardy enough to do it, all of the fixes that we updated in the update bulletin, the video that I posted here on the channel, go check that out, should be resolved. So at least, again, this isn't meant for public use. You might encounter more bugs here than you anticipated, but some of those bugs that were previously an issue have been squashed. Again, I need to reiterate, please don't install this on your device if you only have one available as you may have unforeseen problems. What else do you need to know about Android 16 Developer Preview 2? Well, technically this is the final developer preview for Android 16. Yes, that I, that's the truth here. There isn't much really in terms of actual new features and the crossover with QPR 2, the beta phase of that, is really muddy in the water as some of this stuff might even come on the next fully stable Android 15 release in March 2025 so it's all confusing there isn't much new but we are seeing a lot of the uh, changes kind of coming under the hood so per the android 16 update timeline that we've seen previously we're actually looking at a beta or public beta starting in january that will be safer for us to recommend that you go out and install as it stands we'd say steer clear once again with this update heck i'd even say the qpr beta is probably a better option as things like Google Pay and all those kind of things will work as you expect them to do. Maybe we're not going to get those major changes as well that we expected or hoped from Android 16. There really isn't a major set of user facing changes at all, at least at this stage, that really have or at least haven't set the world alight. It's mostly just under the hood and API level changes for that, that effectively prepare this for bigger changes later down the line, which we are hoping will come. To go back to that timeline again, in 2025, we'll get three betas starting in January. Then there's one in February, one in March, ahead of potentially a stable release sometime in Q2. Things have been simple so far. So maybe that's where we're going to start to see those wholesale changes because it's not happening at the minute. It's just not happening. Google really does need to pull their finger out because there is going to be those three betas in quick succession in the new year. Again, I'm not wishing time away, but we're, maybe, we're, maybe they're saving their best for later down the road. So I'm hopeful that's going to be the case because so far the Android 16 developer preview has been, well, it's been a little bit underwhelming, I have to admit. That might seem harsh, but we just have high expectations around here, and I'm sure you do too. What are you thinking though about Android 16 so far? Have you installed it? I, I mean, again, I don't recommend you do so, but some of you are mad lads and you'd love to run that latest version. How are you getting on? Let me know in the comment sections below. All that's left for me to say is cheers for watching. It's not necessarily that big Christmas gift that we wanted, but a little stocking stuffer nonetheless. Until next time though, I will speak to you later.